border. Well, let's ask the director of the Center for Homeland Security and Immigration at America First Policy Institute, John Zerdosny, who joins us now. John, do they just think we forgot how they were three years ago talking about kids in cages? They're putting more kids in cages. Hi, Natalie. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, no, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I think the best way to, and you provided a really good summary of it before uh, when you said oh, everything they're doing and what they're doing wrong. I think the best way to describe it is it's shocking but not surprising. Um, they basically created a mess intentionally for a bunch of different reasons, and we can talk about that too. But I think basically when you've got this overload and this chaos in the immigration system, it then creates a lot of excuses for things you don't do or you do. And I really strongly encourage the American people to listen to everything they're going to say about why they need to do X and Y in the coming months. But one other thing I'd point out is I think the reason that the failure is so stark is because the Trump administration's success was so significant. I mean, the things we did were very, very significant, and we took bold steps and we solved a lot of problems. We enforced Title 42 at the border, which ensured public health in a time of probably the greatest health crisis in a century. Um, we basically streamlined the asylum process. We stopped fraud and we approved legitimate asylum applications. We deported people who were illegally present in the country. We supported the men and women of ICE and CBP. And we did that and more. And uh, we made such great, great progress, Natalie, that we had at one point, I believe it was last summer, we had fewer than 800 UACs in custody. And so that allowed us to actually make sure we were actually not handing them to a human trafficker, let's say, or an MS-13 um, hub coordinator, whatever you call them. Um, and that was just not something that's acceptable to this administration. They need the crowd, they need the glut, they need the crisis. Well, and it's not surprising that we're seeing all these kids in cages because all the pictures we saw during the Trump administration were actually taken during the Obama administration. They just happened to be outraged because the photos came to light under the Trump administration. But you all actually closed these detention centers that they're reopening and no one's talking about it. And there's abuse going on at some of these facilities. You hear the reports but no one talks about it. So what are you all doing there? I know you're filing a lot of lawsuits trying to actually get some answers and to get this crisis under control. What's the progress on that? Well, I don't handle litigation. There are some, some groups handling litigation on these fronts. From a policy perspective, I can tell you the most important thing this administration could do is actually fully, completely enforce Title 42 and turn people around who come to the border illegally. One of the hard parts about this process is unless you say to people, do not come, the world will read it as come, please come. And that's what's happening. Um, I, I did find it amusing earlier on the Biden administration was trying to say that this was President Trump's fault, even though uh, they were all wearing George Soros manufactured T-shirts -shirts that said, George, uh, Joe Biden, please let us in. Uh, so um, that was pretty amusing. And again, this is something they want for later conversations about how they don't have time and they've got to solve these emergency crises and so on. So what are you all working on in terms of trying to provide the material for the states are really trying to work in terms of litigation? You have other think tanks and policy institutes out there that are trying to get involved because the Biden administration is not going to do anything. But this is impacting everyday people. They can't just wait for four years until we have another election. Things have to start happening now. You're correct, Natalie. And so I, I have the privilege of being the director of the Center for Homeland Security and Immigration here at the America First Policy Institute. So what our goal is, is we're going to spend the next uh, however amount, we're going to spend months, years, basically using our research and our experience and connections to produce material, information, education for state and local governments to be the firewall against what's going on in this administration. You're right, we can't wait four years. There are a lot of damage can be done in four years. But states and localities and leaders and even community leaders have a lot of power here. And so we're going to do everything we can to give them the tools they need to fight back. Um, and uh, yeah, for those who are interested, uh, we have a website. It's uh, AmericaFirstPolicy.com. So I encourage anyone who wants to see what we're doing in the months and weeks to check it out. Um, but that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to help people push back as best they can in their communities. Well, people need to, I think people want to get involved right now because this is our country. And when we see what's happening on the border and you see the Biden administration's really exploiting this, almost like the endless wars where they're giving contracts now, no bid contracts to a lot of their cronies. So they're making money on extending this crisis. They don't have any incentive to actually shut the crisis down. 
Kamala is not going to go to the border. She's going to talk to the triangle countries. So there really is no pressure that can be put on them except through litigation and the states. Of course, some of the governors have deployed National Guard, but that's nothing compared to the 28,000 na National Guard troops that were there on Mexico's side of the border under President Trump. No, Natalie, you're 100 percent correct. And one important point, you mentioned lawsuits. Lawsuits are important. They're tactical. They're needed to slow down the administration because this is what they did to us. Um, and it's the sort of thing they have to deal with. They have to spend money on it. They have to have attorneys look at things. Um, but the real power is in the sovereignty of the states, which can push back using their constitutional authority to protect their citizens. It's not just a tool they have. It's an obligation they have. And we're going to be working with them in the months to come to make sure they're aware of their obligations and give them just the best array of tools they can use. That's the coolest thing that we're seeing happening right now. States are really learning why there's states, why we're not just one big, we're one big country, but there's states and there's localities. And we saw that in the last election where states were supposed to handle the elections and the federal government tried to, you know, not do that. The Congress didn't want to do their duty there. But states are getting more active and we have more elections coming out now. So states, they'll go to your website if they want to reach out to you, the representatives there, governors there. And then that's how they stay in touch. Same with uh, citizens there. Uh, yeah, again, our website is AmericaFirstPolicy.com, and uh, we stand ready to help anyone who wants information about how to make America great again. Wonderful. Well, God bless you on your efforts. The Trump administration, you all showed us exactly how things should be done, and now Biden's showing us exactly what not to do, and it's frightening. But thank you for being part of this new resistance that we're having to find, and, and we'll win because the people in the long run, the people are with you. So keep it up, and God bless. Thanks, Natalie.